Hey guys, and welcome to another video. This will be another Will It Run style, and it's gonna be on this 1987 Ford Bronco 2. So I actually started the video on another, an 86, that was down in the Philly lot, but haven't had a chance to get that one. There's a couple, couple hiccups going on with that. But I found this, this beauty, and it's a manual trans. It's got the 2.9 liter, it's all intact. I don't know how long it's been sitting, but the price was right. So I think uh, I think it'll be a good candidate for a will it run. Got some trees growing under it and such, but yeah, you know, I don't think this has been sitting for. I, I don't know. I have no idea. The the owner of this yard doesn't know either. Well, he says it's been sitting here for some years, but before that, it was uh, sitting too. Well, that that opened up real nice. So we're gonna just kind of jump into this video and do a walk around. Uh, this rig is gonna be for sale. I you know, I can't keep all these. A lot of time. People say, why are you starting all these new projects when you haven't finished the last? And well, I just I just love taking something that may or may not run and I like messing around with it. And it seems you guys like seeing that. So we'll, uh, yeah, kind of on a time crunch today because this guy wants me to get this thing out of here, but kind of nice little dull stage pump there. What is that, like a high pressure? Is that a scuba pump? The trunk's pretty clean and you can see the interior in this, uh, I don't know how well the lighting is right now, but look at the headliners intact. I mean, this is this is not bad. Doesn't look like it was ever in a flood. The cargo cover is still there. Let's see if the back glass opens. You turn this to the right. Oh, I guess you gotta make sure you have that closed. No, maybe, oh, it's the opposite way, to the left. Look at that, even the glass works. And this, you know, the struts don't hold it, but that's pretty normal. See what the oh, gas cap's missing and uh, all rusted in there. How does it smell? That's that bad. But you know, sometimes the neck smells really bad, and then the fuel in the tank is not as horrible. Uh, definitely some flat, dry rotted tires, loose lug nuts, sweet alloy wheels, though. A little bit of body damage right here. Uh, maybe that's why this thing was originally abandoned manual lock and hubs i gotta say the 80s ford headlights love the glass beams they look so much better than the you know, the plastic ones that they started putting on these put open here 2.9 liter fuel injection electronic fuel injection so we're looking all complete i mean minus missing the battery this is this is all complete so hopefully the, the motor's not locked up or anything but i'm liking what i see here this has not been messed with absolutely beautiful the paint job's actually in really nice condition could use a clear coat since that's coming off but like the paint itself it's definitely half decent let's uh pop inside of here oh yeah manual shift transfer case and transmission Ooh, that's that's a slopper and it has a key would you look at that and it works that's amazing uh, 51,000 miles on it. Reset that trip. That was at 311. The controls all work. This thing is half decent. Some cigarette butts in here. Oh, looks like somebody was messing with the, the key though, huh? Interesting. Well, but, oh, look at this. We got our warranty. Oh, well, you guys can see this. 1987. Ranger Bronco 2, all the original paperwork, the scheduled maintenance. Well, geez, that definitely adds some value to this rig. Yeah, it's got the, you know, I love these old Ford. My mom used to have a uh, Kano line conversion van that had that same radio. Just a, a great unit. And here's the full owner's guide. Very sweet that it comes with that. It's, it's usually everything I mess with. Uh, don't say, huh? Somebody must have had the steering wheel off too. Hmm. Oh, look at this. Got some tape decks. The uh, Pink Floyd, the great collection of dance songs. A, gr a great collection of dance songs. Pink Floyd, huh? All right, we'll have to we'll have to try that out later. My kids' blanket. And wow, this one's not rusted out in the door. Every other Bronco two I ever see is always rotted out completely right here. Uh, I haven't even rolled under this, so we'll, we'll be looking at that later. Again, for the, for the price, 
It couldn't go wrong. I'm sure the motor's blown or the trans is, but I'm, I'm hoping if it runs and drives, we can put Jen behind the wheel of this and teach her how to drive stick shift too. And now with the initial inspection out of the way, let's load this up on the trailer, bring her home. Gloves. Easy Rhino sent me these, uh, a viewer of the channel. He sent me a few pair of these sweet contour grip gloves. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. I'll definitely be using them. First look underneath. Uh, not bad. Looking tight up front. Usually front ends are real crowded up. Sure, it'll roll fine. I'll just hook it on the funky Ford front axle and see if it, you know, if it rolls easy, I'm not gonna yank it if it's stuck though. I guess I could try to put some air in the tires to make this a little easier, huh? The JF Eggwo to the rescue. Love that this jump pack has the compressor built in. And she's definitely a roller though, look at that. Let that sound for a minute. 15 PSI, and I don't hear any leaks. Fronts both took 15 PSI, so that'll definitely help out. Two out of four is better than zero out of four. Badlands for the win. This has been a great win for me. Just beating the balls off, and it's even been in 10 feet of water, like everything else on this truck. See, I have this strategic dent placed in my rear bumper. That way the box can kind of slide in there and get, get a full jackknife to be able to easily pull cars on. It's actually from backing into a telephone pole during a snowstorm. Not from jackknifing the trailer, but it's, it's convenient, that's for sure. not this oh <laughs> the jf eggwo uh winched that whole thing up no problem this, this is a tough jump pack i've really been beating it up and well even just that i mean that was just <laughs> ah, let's get this thing up when i rolled out of there i spoke with the owner of the yard's wife and she said that uh ranger or i'm sorry bronco 2 same difference been sitting for at least 10 years it was towed in and she said she didn't know if it ran when it was towed in or not uh, apparently it was illegally parked and then they they forfeited the title i suppose but now the title is lost or something too i don't know you know it's hard to get titles for these old cars i tell you and we're back home ready to tear into this turtle bucket but before we want to introduce you to the newest member of the family this is gus he is an eight week year old or eight eight week year old <laughs> he's an eight week old uh dachshund mini and he well, he's still a little timid because we just brought him home last night, but uh, here, here he is, the newest member to the channel. Come here, Gus. Here. Smaller of a dog than I would like. He's like three pounds right now. But hopefully he can help help Turbo hunt the, the moles and mice in the yard. You said these were badger hunters, right? Yes. And with those short legs, he's, Come here, Gus. he's able to dig you know, burrow his way into holes and such. And he's already really been getting along with Turbo. I don't know where Turbo is at right now, uh, but we had him with the chicks too, which he gets along with the chicks. We gotta make sure 
they uh, are comfortable because otherwise he'll be chasing and barking at them all the time and they'll never be laying. <laughs> he needs to know they're part of the family. Give me here. Anyway, that is Gus and I'm sure you'll be seeing more of him on the channel. And now for some fun. First order of business. Does she rotate? Is the motor locked up? I'll grab one of these belts. Mm, nothing. It's got 19 mil on the crankshaft. And here we go. Yep, look at that. Plenty free. Okay. As I always say, it's a great idea to rotate this by hand, full 360. But, you know, this doesn't look like it's been sitting more than 10 years. And, well, quite frankly, I, I don't care that much. Uh, no coolant in there, it feels like. That is the next step. I'm checking the fluids. Feels like that was bone dry on the bottom end. Yeah, nothing, nothing up here, just some mud. All right, maybe a head gasket. Power steering. Ooh, um, yeah, tiny bit in there. Not on the stick, but a little bit in the bottom. Oil, that's a big one. And we are just below, actually, yeah, just below the max. Smells like some old junkyard oil. Maybe a little bit of gas, but good to go. With the manual trans, we'll check that plug at a later time. The uh, intake boot is off and there's a uh, mouse nest in there, it looks like. Let's see if the throttle blade moves. Uh, no, that's, that's seized up a little bit. Sure, it won't take much to break free, but we'll just tack her with a little PB blast. And that actually wasn't much seized because after I pushed it, initial click, it's working good. Brake fluid, nothing in there. I guess I'll top that off for now so we can see if there's any leaks. The most common place for it to disappear is the wheel cylinders on the drum brakes on vehicles that have been sitting a long time. But yeah, that was it's definitely bone dry. Let's see if that brake pedal pushes. I... Oh, there it goes. It was locked. So that means there's probably just a little bit of rust or corrosion starting in there. And the clutch seized. Oh, there it goes. So, oh, is that a hydraulic clutch? Yeah, I think it might be because it's not that pushed down. And it's not doing anything. Yeah, yeah, there she is. Check that fluid's probably empty too. You just top her off, see if that comes back to life. Oh, that's going down and coming back good now. Sweet. Clutch is a okay. Well, that doesn't mean it's not seized up pressure plate. And it's not even a squirter. Beautiful. Look at that dark brown, nasty fluid. I find if you get a little dirt in the brake fluid, that actually helps uh, polish out the those bores, get them back to their smooth bore status. You know, a little dust goes a long way in this case. And go ahead and fill up the cooling system. See if that starts dumping out on the bottom anywhere. Yeah, actually that only took about a gallon. So maybe there was, there was some coolant down in there. Take a quick glance at the undercarriage on this rig. Uh, rust ain't looking bad for an 87 at all. Actually, pretty darn clean on the back, too. Look at that hitch. Even the leaf spring hangers aren't falling apart. We even got both the catalytic converters in place. Transfer case ain't leaking. The twin traction beam suspension on these Fords is kind of, it was kind of revolutionary in its day and offered like super cushy ride compared to a straight axle. It's such a funky design though with the differential built into it. It's like, it certainly had its flaws though, tire wear being one of them. Like sitting down, it's fine, but as soon as it gets jacked up, the camber goes wild on it though. But definitely neat how they, they the differential cover is part of the suspension. What's going on over here, buddy? What are you doing, Gus? You gotta go potty. Mommy said you gotta go potty when you come out here. <laughs> and then I can get back to work. I think it's time to electrify this party and drop in the best battery ever, an Optima, and put some power to the situation. Always a good idea to brush off the terminals a little bit. Better to use the appropriate wire brush. But this will work. Yeah, lead dust. That's real healthy for you. So, oh, that was pushed on nice. I'm gonna do that tap test where... Oh, you hear that? We don't have any sparks here, but I... Well, you know what? I'm gonna make sure the key's off. The key was on and 
Uh, that clicking's gone. I don't want that fuel pump kicking on. I'm gonna take the next thing I'm gonna do is take the fuel return off. I meant the fuel feed off. You can always tell which one's the feed because the return will have uh, the pressure regulator attached to it. So you can see that regulator's mounted on the fuel rail. And man, this fuel rail is really rusty. Most uh, modern cars use stainless steel because you don't want a fuel, fuel rail with 60 psi fuel on it uh, blowing through. So on these boards, you got, oh, you got a screwdriver. Those are a nice design. Shoot a little rust penny in here because there's a little spring that can get seized up sometimes. Grab the right size fuel disconnect. One of these should work. And it looks like half inch. Drop that on. Make sure your system's not pressurized. Push her on in and then slide the line off. Oh, she is seized on there. That's being stubborn, and I don't want to break the line, so I'll just let that rust penetrant do its job and go with plan B. And take this Schrader cap off, valve cap, and then thread my fuel pressure gauge on there. Uh, so that way any fuel getting pumped in, we can kind of just take a quick sample before we try to fire it through the injectors. That's assuming the fuel pump works and that the fuel filter will do its job keeping the crud back there. And here goes nothing. Key on. No, no fuel pump sound. I didn't crank it yet though. Make sure we're in neutral. Oh, that clutch feels great. We got a crank. Still don't hear the fuel pump though. Let's hear that crank though. Oh yeah. They got no pump though, but that sounds awesome. Heck yeah. The uh, fuel pump relay should be underneath of this cover. And it's already cracked anyway. Oh yeah, I think that's how that comes apart. Yeah. My rain shield. I believe it's one of these two. I'm gonna go with this one, the green connector. Well, on this four wire, we got a power, a ground, a power, and no ground here. So when I turn the key on, this one should. And I heard that ground out, so that means it's a ground controlled relay, which makes sense because pretty much every relay is. All the wiring's uh, working properly on this. Let's see if the relay works. We know we're getting the ground when we turn key, so I'll just apply ground real quick. Yep, relay's working good. That means the fuel pump is locked up or has a wiring issue back there, so I'll just leave this grounded. See if we got power going to the pump. Yep. All right, let's go check back there now. Well, figure I should hop on the PC and make sure I'm troubleshooting the right circuit first. But before clicking on any of these random website images, I'm gonna make sure my VPN is turned on. That's right, my NordVPN, the best virtual private network service available, and this video is sponsored by that. If you go to nordvpn.com, you'll also see up top that they, along with every other website you visit, have access to your IP address, which gives them a pretty darn good idea of where you're located. Go ahead and Google that IP address and you'll see a map that's very close to where you live. Luckily though, you can easily mask your IP address with NordVPN and the best part is that it costs less than a cup of coffee per month for their awesome service. They also happen to be one of the fastest and most trustworthy VPNs available. But it's more than just concealing your IP. Browsing the internet through a VPN encrypts your data and has all sorts of other practical uses like let's say for instance you want to watch a TV show that's only available in Bulgaria no problem, one click away, and all of a sudden the internet thinks you're in Bulgaria. So if you want to protect yourself while surfing the web, then check out the link down below for an exclusive deal and go to nordvpn.com slash no-nonsense where you can try it risk-free thanks to their money-back guarantee. And now let's get back to see if we can get this Bronco 2 running and cruising. Assuming power's making it to the pump, we can start with the old wackaroo test. That's proving no results. That means we'll have to drop the tank down. Assuming there's no access uh, inside of here. That, that would not be the case. It'd be kind of cool if there was though. Oh, lots of ants in here. She loves her new little babies. Such a happy hen. Yeah, you didn't make them, but living your motherhood, right? So cute. Let's just take a peek through here. Maybe we'll find some hidden treasures. 
gold or drugs or something, you know? Oh yeah, look at that. No rust through. A ton of ants though. They liked it in here. Well, as you see, if maybe somebody could have cut an access hole in there, you never know. Well, my storage bin off to the side. Just uh, the stainless steel capped lug nuts. He probably got rid of these because they were swelling like they always do. And he put the chromoly ones on there. What's that cluster off of? Anybody know? Drop a comment down below if you do. It's quite unique. I'm kind of getting off topic from the fuel pump here now, but this is a bunch of just some notepads. Yeah, there you go. Ashtray in the back. Yeah, this looks nasty. Should I be wearing a mask? Nothing in here. Cigarette butt in that one. About right here, I'd say, yeah. Oh, it's got the jack in there too. Look at that. This thing is gold. Maybe this is just a regular air pump. It's got the chuck on there. Let's plug it in and see if it catches on fire. Well, you got the tab bent back. There it is. Yeah, well, that works good. Anybody want to buy a nice compressor? solid i always like to leave jack or blocks under there just to be safe too nice fuel tank skid plate on here i'll uh hose down these bolts drop the plate first and then the tank Pretty crusty on the bottom and it looks like pin a hole here but I mean it sounds like actually a ton of fuel in there or water so I suppose we should pump her out first you actually can get to the wires down there a little bit if you had to uh, way down yonder <laughs> Yeah, dude, look at that. That's okay, this tank's shot anyway, guys. Yeah, clearly it's rusted out tank. It's, it's shot. All right. <laughs> oh yeah, that's crusty in there. Instead of having the Exxon Valdez in my backyard, I, um, so that tank could crack at any moment with all the rust. Got this diaphragm pump. It's pretty awesome for uh, pumping gasoline. It operates off of air pressure. It has two diaphragms in here. Let's see. Drop the hose in that convenient torn hole in the top of the tank. Let's see what she does. Check out how fast this pump is when I dunk it in. I'm having trouble keeping it dunked, but yeah, look at that stuff. Oh my gosh. There it goes. Oh. Oh, it can barely pump it. Listen to this thing. Oh, it's because I, I kinked it. Oh my gosh. All right, all right, let's keep that kinked. Yeah, so now I got full prime, and you guys can see that feel. Could probably run this stuff right in the coming 12 valve straight. Let's do the fire test. I'm sure it burns to perfection. Watch this. It's going to be black smoke, though. Ooh, yeah. Look at that. That's some good stuff. All right, well, oh yeah, it smells like. It smells like diesel burning, really, it really does. Light this whole thing on fire. Truth be told, this gasoline probably would have ran this engine fine if the fuel pump was working. Uh, but it also has all sorts of other practical uses like a Molotov cocktail. But uh, we're not gonna do that. I'll save some of this just to, in case any of you guys wanna see this put into an engine in the future. We'll, uh, maybe we'll do that. Hopefully nobody tries to take a swig of this as whiskey. Should probably label it. 
Oh yeah, a little more than 100 proof. This is aged to perfection. Just one last test, we got a little bit of gas left in here. I bet you this won't light if I try to burn it because it's not as volatile as gas should be, yeah, you see? It'll burn, but it won't stay lit. It needs a wick, just like diesel does, because it's just, it's just not volatile. It's been sitting forever, and all the volatile evaporative emissions have came out of it. it look how fast this is growing. It's unreal. wrestling with those fuel connections for a little bit oh yeah this thing was completely rusted out on the top it's paper thin but as soon as i pried on it popped right off uh, well we had another nest down in here coming out of the trunk there um, so yeah this this tank's trash feels like a lot of sludge in there well geez that's not what i was going for here Oh my god, there must be an inch of sludge on the bottom of this thing. Holy... I guess we could see why the fuel pump wasn't working. Never have I ever seen a tank this bad. That is five inches of rust and sludge. Sure, the fuel filter would have taken care of that one. <laughs> have you ever seen one that bad? It's a good thing we pumped this this thing out. I'm surprised the diaphragm pump didn't get clogged up. Probably should have had a screen on it. But I'll soak the rest of this up and properly dispose of everything here at uh, the automotive shop, so they can they can kind of deal with this mess. Is you would not want to throw that in the trash can. So it just needs a tank, a fuel pump, and a fuel filter. I'll use a couple tank straps too. Yeah, it's a little paper thin, huh? Surprisingly not bad under here. I mean, look at the bottom of this bed. You saw the paint inside. Yeah, I'm sure the rodent piss probably was very corrosive and melted the paint on the inside. That's why that rusted through. But look at the frame. I mean, there's, there's no rot on this at all. Nice solid looking differential with no leaks. Maybe a little gear oil coming out of the axle seals. Speaking of, I guess let's pull the uh, rear wheels because these, uh, you know, these tires are not repairable. A little gear oil leaking in there. It's driven for a while like that too, for sure. Got that. Surprised that was that hard to get off of there. Let's see if the wheel seals are leaking too. No. And no. Alright. That doesn't mean they're not seized up though. That's a good sign. The axle seals aren't leaking. Axle flange didn't soak like the other side. I see why spraying that PB Blast on the studs themselves. I mean, that really works into here if you have a seized one. Um, yeah, these wheel cylinders are not leaking, but just totally, totally shot. Bombings are good though. And the rest is looking pretty nice. Super heavy duty leaf springs compared to you know, today's SUV suspensions. Built Ford Tough. Let's check the rest of these fluid levels, starting with the gear oil and the trans. Yep, nice fresh gear oil in there. The transfer case is bone dry. And when I say bone dry, I mean it's not leaking a drip drop, which is crazy, because I, I see cars with 20,000 miles on them leaking. All right, or maybe it's just empty, let's find out. Oh yeah, looks like ATF in there. Rear differential, looks like darkness in there. Uh, but we do have oil on the stick. Final stop is the front differential. Got a square drive. Ooh. 
Mm, yeah. Same thing. Smells like garbage, but it's got oil. It's even got the axle tag on it. You don't usually see that on old vehicles. And for the rear tires, I found some good use, good year integrities. It'll fit the bill. A little shorter, but it'll kind of give it a dash of that Carolina squat look. Actually looking kind of awesome with that size tire. Might have to see if there's two more in the bin for the front. It's getting ready to dump. Uh, hopefully not though, I haven't looked at the radar, but I did pump up the brakes after uh, filling the reservoir. And here's our leak right at the back, so that'll be an easy fix. Just uh, one quick little brake line. I'm probably getting ready to blow everywhere else too, but we'll go back to that. And we got a new fuel filter to throw in. I'm excited to see what the other one looks like. It's going to be right on the frame rail here. A couple 13s and that whole bracket comes down. Um, oh, is this an inline? There is a fuel filter behind it. It's got a cartridge style. And it has an inline pump. Interesting. All right, well, a lot of you older guys are probably looking at me like, you didn't know that. <laughs> I don't work on these old Fords that often. Um, but okay. Take this pump out anyway and bring that on a bench. I'm sure it's locked up from sitting. Oh, you got the cartridge filter, the pump, and then another inline filter after that. Oh, yeah. Delicious. And let's move up to this front filter. I want to cut that up and see what it looks like. How about this cartridge? Looks like I'll have to take the bracket off the frame too. No filter, it's just like a water separator. Okay. Inside of the fuel filter wasn't too bad, just some surface rust in there, and yeah, you know, definitely could have reused that. On this inline pump, I tried applying 12 volts, it wasn't doing anything. So I got this Gulu jump pack. This is actually about 15 volts. Let's see if that does anything, give it a little jump start, you know. Nothing. Oh, it's actually, it's pulling a load too. It's because I can see it sparking and I hear it trying to turn in there. Let's get the old tap test. Things loosened up in there. All right, I hear it making a little bit of noise, but that's, that's it. Yeah, this is not rebuildable at all. I mean, if you were in, you, you could if you uncrimped it, and, but we're not going to deal with that. I'll just find a new inline pump that'll work for it tomorrow. I got an idea. This stainless steel fire extinguisher always comes in handy. Just fill it up with some fuel. Then I just charge this with 32 PSI of carbon dioxide from my MIG tank. And I cut the end of the fuel filter off, so we have a fuel adapter. I'm going to hook this up to the, the feed side of the fuel and just pressurize it that way. Should probably put the lock tab in here, too. This is quite literally the opposite of a fire extinguisher. It's actually a flamethrower, really, if I just had a spark on the end. 
Uh, it's important to use an inert gas when you're doing this because if you pressurize this with air, I mean, you could and it'd probably be fine, but you, basically it's a bomb. You know, if there was a spark to enter there and you have it pressurized with air, well, that could lead to an explosion. If you use an inert gas, it shouldn't be able to explode in there. Well, that's extremely jerry-rigged on there and it might not work because we do have the fuel return. So I'll put a bucket back here, uh, but it's got the fuel pressure regulator. So technically if it's around 35 PSI, it shouldn't even open up the regulator. Let's, let's find out. Here goes nothing. Oh, all right. Well, I'm leaking out the top of this, so that's not good. I took the crimp off, removed this, replaced the rubber washer, and I think we should be pretty sealed up now. And we're not leaking. Tie this off. Let's purge out the fuel. There it is. There is the freshie. All right, let's fire this baby up. Provided we got injector pulse and spark, it should fire. Let's give it a go. There's a little rod knock there for a second. What was up with that? It's island. Perfect. Listen to this little thing. I mean, I'm sure the head gas gets blown. It's got all sorts of other issues, but whisper quiet, no smoke. Running like a towel. Not quite the Carolina squad I was hoping for. i make sure we don't throw it in four wheel drive on the pavement. I'll blow the transfer case up. What if I already blow the exhaust out? I revved it once. Oh yeah, right there. Blew the gasket out. Darn. Now it's got that, that pre-cat stink to it. Uh, I, I can't, I'm getting in gear and the clutch is released, but the clutch won't engage. Yeah, clutch is just completely wiped out on it no matter what I do. I mean, you can be sitting here idling. We're in, well, we're in four low right now, but we throw it right into reverse. Any gear, doesn't matter. And the transfer case is not neutral. And throw that all the way up, same deal. Any gear, that would be funny if that clutch all of a sudden engaged and it jumped into my Tundra. <laughs> Next morning, let's try doing a cold start. It's about 50 degrees. Let's see how she fires up. And trying one last thing before we condemn the clutch. I relieved the hydraulic pressure from the line just to make sure uh, it's just not a sticking piston in the master cylinder. Let's try it out. Yeah, no good. It just goes right into gear. So clutch is wiped out on it. And uh, I don't think we're going to do one of those. If I had a lift here at the house, I probably would drop it because I think she deserves one. Brake line, a couple other tires, and we'd be ripping around. But uh, yeah, fuel tank, fuel pump, all that good jazz. I think I'll post this up on Marketplace today, see if we can make a couple dollars on it. I mean, they can't all be winners, you know, you can't fix everything. But this would not have been a fire it up and drive it home type of situation. She's going to need a little bit more than that, as you might assume, but you know, sometimes we, we do get lucky. Leave the pressure from the fuel system before I go taking lines off. Whenever you use a fuel pressure gauge like this, always make sure to blow the fuel out of the line. You don't want to leave that in there, it'll get all gummy. And then for this valve too, it's a great idea to take a little oil, open it up and, and lubricate that, then cycle it. Cause I once didn't do that. And then it sat for, I don't know, a few months and the, it was completely seized up. And of course, if you're using a fire extinguisher with gasoline that make sure to empty that out and also lubricate this valve because the seals will dry out in there. In fact, just don't ever, don't do this at home. 
Don't ever put gasoline in the fire extinguisher. Not, not a good idea. Not really a good roller. Could jack the trailer up then slowly winch it backwards. Or just... about a week later and geez I don't even remember where we left off I just had to get it off the trailer because I had a, a job lined up tried doing a quick VIN search see if I can get in contact with the previous owner maybe get a title real easily I'm sure nobody's honestly missing this this old Bronco too but uh, to no avail and so if you recognize this and know who the previous owner was let me know you can find my email down in the about section on this YouTube page or uh, heck if this is your Bronco too and you want it back consider your tow bill paid and it's sitting here waiting for you just come grab it doesn't run and drive needs a little TLC and it honestly deserves that this is legally parked here or at least the next few more days after this video has been posted and at which point it may be towed for illegal parking by the owner of this property. Uh, so act quick if you do want this thing. And I think that'll probably wrap this video up. Again, if I had a title, I would definitely put some more work and effort into it. Uh, if you're interested in buying this and you're near the Philadelphia area, I'm just north of Philadelphia, uh, let me know if you want it as a farm truck or for a parts truck or whatever the case. But definitely worth I mean, I paid 500 bucks for it, so heck, it's worth that in scrap. I'd love to try and get 800 for it, you know, whatever. But more than anything, I would like to see it go to a good home instead of the crusher. So yeah, hopefully you still enjoyed this video even though we didn't get our drive in. Probably could have checked that clutch uh, before putting all the time into it. I would, you know, could have put it in gear, tried rocking it. But I really had, really had high hopes for this one. Anyway guys, thanks so much for checking the video out and watching this far if you did. I hope to see you in a future one. I got lots of different random videos coming up. And by the way, if you're not into the super jump around random type videos, then this channel might not be for you because I do uh, pretty scattered with what I work on. I kind of just jump around on everything. So. Hopefully you enjoy that, and I'll see you in a future video. Oh, and I think it goes without saying, if in the off chance you do recognize this Bronco too, and it's yours, uh, make sure you have proof of ownership before you email me. Don't just email me and say, oh, that's my Bronco too. I'll come pick it up. You know, make sure you got that VIN and proof of ownership, like a registration or a title. Don't think that's going to happen, but you never know with the internet.